The pawning business is rifle with cheaters, tricksters, and pedophoggers. Unfortunately, there is an army of dishonest slimeballs out there who are not interested in helping their fellow man or earning an honest dollar. They are out to enrich themselves without contributing a damn thing to society. And just because they have a high profile show, the pawn stars are not immune to the fraudulent, unethical, and crooked rent seekers trying to scam their way into a quick buck at another's expense. So today, we take a look at some of these slimy deals. Here's how the pawn stars got seriously scammed. Number 4. Balls This counterfeit ball and chain set came into the pawn shop, but Rick immediately nailed it as a phony. But when Rick shows a little interest in the box containing these curious items, the seller lights up like a Christmas tree and claims that the ball and chain didn't come in that box, but that he put it in there later. Sure, but Rick takes the bait and buys the box which turns out to be 100% fake balls. Number 3. Baby You Can Drive My Car If It Runs when purchasing a car to resell in their shop, it's vital that the pawn stars ensure that the vehicle is first a valuable model, second, looks good cosmetically, and most importantly, will turn on. So at first, we find Rick dropping a ball on an Austin Healey Sprite. This fine set of wheels easily meets the first two criteria, but when Rick attempts to start it, he gets nothing. The seller insists that the needed repairs are minor, and the typically skeptical Rick takes his word for it and buys the car for five grand. Turns out the repairs were not all that simple, and Rick had to hand over an additional $6,000 to make the necessary repairs. Something I guess we can call a benefit to being a constant target for scammers is the pawn stars have developed real skills at spotting fake items. They've shared some of their wisdom from the trenches and how-to segments, zeroing in on two of the more often fabricated items, watches and diamonds. Which brings us to number two, Rolex, a crown for every achievement. In this helpful clip, Rick explains how to spot a fake Rolex. He claims that at least one person every day comes into the shop trying to sell a Rolex. And it's no surprise that a good number of these are fabricated as the Swiss Customs Service estimates that between 30 and 40 million counterfeit watches are put into circulation each and every year. So Rick gives us a helpful list of tips. Number one, if you're buying it for 50 bucks, it has to be fake. Number two, Rolex will not allow an imperfect watch to come off the line. They trash any timepiece that has even the most insignificant flaw. So, unlike the diamonds we'll see in a minute, a real Rolex is always perfect. The day and the date are always in gold or platinum. Stainless steel is a sure imposter. The magnifying glass above the date will magnify at two and a half times. A fake watch will usually magnify smaller. So if you have to squint to see the date, probably fake. As a teenager, Corey started working the night shift at the pawn shop. At that time, we can assume he wasn't as skeptical of sellers or as sharp at spotting fake items as he is now. So the young, inexperienced pawn star gets duped into purchasing a fake Rolex. Word rapidly spread about the gullible night shift guy, and in came the scammers. He bought six fake Rolexes in the span of a week, while thinking he was killing it by only dropping four grand on all the fake watches. And number one, diamonds are forever. Back in the day, even the old man could be fooled. I know, I know, it sounds impossible. And it took quite a venture to trick the only pawn star with enough wisdom to sport gray hair. Let's take a look at how this came to be. Here we see Big Hoss given a lesson in spotting fake diamonds. The main way to determine the validity of a stone is to simply look at it. But most of the tells are not detectable with the naked eye. So you'll need a loop, which is a small magnifying glass used by jewelers. When zoomed in on, the coloring of a diamond is an immediate giveaway. Any real diamond will have small imperfections and yellowing. A flawless diamond is going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, so if you have one in your hands, it is almost certainly an imposter. A common diamond stand-in is called cubic zirconia, or CZ for short. It is the cubic crystal line of zirconium oxide, which is where CZ gets the misnomer cubic zirconium. Zirconium oxide was discovered in the late 1890s, but it wasn't until the 1930s that German mineralogists found naturally formed bits of cubic zirconia, and the process was mimicked in a few labs but never successfully mass-produced. Finally, in the 1970s, a group of Soviet scientists inside the USSR cracked the code on the process of growing cubic zirconia crystals. 
Little did they know the mischief that would befall the gold and silver pawn shop on their behalf. In 1976, CZ began being produced commercially, and only one year later they were being mass produced by jewelry companies. So here are the differences between the real thing and the imposter. Cubic zirconia is softer than a real diamond, and therefore will develop round edges over time when a diamond would have held its sharp angles. They are also heavier than real diamonds with a density of 1.7 times that of the real thing. And lastly, as Corey points out in his instructions on spotting a phony, cubic zirconia are man-made jewels. So as the CZ began being rapidly produced and flooded the market just briefly after its discovery, the jewelry industry faced a lag time in being able to spot them and tell the difference. So this led many merchants, including our dear old man, to be conned by cubic zirconia posing as real diamonds. The old man estimates losing between $25,000 and $30,000 on purchasing what he thought were legitimate diamonds. Oh, well that hurts. The pawn stars are just trying to make an honest buck. They buy and sell at fair prices, attract rare items that their buyers can count on them to find, and pay cash to people who need it in exchange for valuable merchandise. And here we see these hardworking gentlemen with a target on their back and slimy scammers trying to take advantage of their efforts. Well, shame on them. And let's hope the wisdom the Pawn Stars share with us can keep us out of the grips of the frauds. And in the words of the late, great old man, It was a lesson learned.